What's up, everyone? Today, we're taking a look at what it takes to run an indie music production house. We have James Ray with us, a.k.a. Bass Bastard from Sensory Distortion, an indie label out of Phoenix, Arizona. We are in Bass Bastard's music den. What do you call it? How you doing, James? Pretty good. I just call it my studio. It's a home studio with all the toys. All right. So many people haven't seen or, or don't understand the complexity behind what a person like you does. I, I hope to bring some light to that. But first, what kind of music do you make and what instruments do you play? So I'm in a regular band, as you know. Um, I play bass guitar primarily as my main instrument. <laughs> Over the years, I've, I've uh, played regular guitar just as a rhythm player. Uh, that's not what I started on. I'm actually one of the rare bass guitar players that started on bass guitar. And bass is my passion. That's why we have what we have in front of us here today, which is calling it EDM or industrial would be a little bit limiting. They're... The closest I can come to being happy with the definition would be like industrial glitch. Industrial uh, glitch. Industrial glitch. Yeah, I, I like to take samples, noises, and regular instrumentation and turn it into rhythms. <laughs> How many instruments can you connect all at once? Acoustic instruments, I can, I can connect 10. 10. And then virtual instruments and is probably unlimited, I would imagine. Virtual instruments are limited by the amount of memory I have on my computer. Right now, I can safely run about eight um, pure virtual instruments without clipping the, clipping the processor and overloading memory. Wow. So this isn't, uh, you couldn't just go to any studio and expect to find anywhere near the, the amount of variety of equipment that you have. Uh, no. No. This is one of those uh, Frankenstein's. random collection of stuff. I mean, you're going to find a MIDI keyboard in every studio. You're going to find an audio interface and a mixer in every studio. My mixer is virtual. Um, I have... Uh, a Behringer XR uh, 18, which is a pro level a pro level mixer on the entry level side. A lot of clubs use that for live sound. They use the the X32, which is uh, considerably more expensive, which is why I don't have one. They um, but they all run off the same premise: is you can use a tablet, iPad, Android, um, Windows, Mac, whatever and run mixer software and use either a touch screen or a keyboard and mouse to uh, create a master mix, which then can be saved. It's really cool because since they're, you know, yeah, yeah, there are physical uh, mixing services out there that have motorized faders and you can save all of your settings, but this takes up just rack space instead of desk space. And you can literally be walking around stage over Wi-Fi using your uh, tablet to manipulate your monitor mixes and your main mixes and your side mixes all at the same time and listen to it from the perspective of the band, listen to it from the perspective of the audience, and then go back to your mix booth and listen to it from the perspective of your mix booth. Wow. It's a really cool setup. How many devices, not instruments, but like keyboards and mixers, and how many do you think you have connected together? Like 50, 100? Uh, in this particular setup, including the outboard stuff that does not roll with this rig, because this rig will pack up and roll without unplugging anything but power. 
um, I have uh, 22 devices connected right now. Wow. So all those devices, what would you say if I had, if I had the money and just wanted to go in the store and buy all that, what, what would all that cost a person? So caveat. Um, there's maybe two things on this that I actually paid retail for. Everything else is uh, pawn shops and Craigslist. Good to know. Um, so if you were to pay full retail for everything that I have here, it'd be over 20 grand. Wow. Uh, just, just the, just the effects are over a grand worth of, of here. The, the two keyboards I have, the, the two regular keyboards I have for control surfaces, close to 1500 total each or total the rolly stuff to get the newer versions of the rolly stuff by themselves are a couple of grand. Um, the, I'm using the mini Nova. The mini Nova is actually pretty cheap. That one comes in retail uh, close to 400. And then the reason I mentioned the larger prizes I'm using in the background, I'm using native instruments, uh, complete ultimate which is thousands of instruments, uh, wow. virtual instruments that can be played with a keyboard um, or triggered as a drum, as drums. Uh, the Chaosolator and Chaos Pad, I think those are a couple hundred bucks a piece right now. Um, so you have a choice of either a car or your or that room. <laughs> yeah, a car or this room, yeah. And, and I'm not counting the cost of the bases. You know, right. The bass guitars themselves. Yeah, that's a whole nother, whole nother ball of wax. Yeah. And then I have my, my, one of my bass amps over here. So yeah, well, I'm not even going to get into that because then it starts getting depressing because it's, we're getting into 401k territory. <laughs> so what advice do you have for indie artists on a budget that kind of want to follow, follow what you're doing, but without the 30 grand? Um, Ableton comes able to light comes with a whole bunch of, you know, and by the way, there are a number of cool software programs, like the most affordable to get into would be like uh, FL studio. Fruity, if you remember Fruity Loops from back in the day, I do. Uh, FL studio comes with a whole bunch of really kick-ass um, plugins free. So you get, you get that and get some kind of like, you know, $99 control surface, like my, my innovation control surface here, you can actually get now for 99 bucks. When I first got it, it wasn't that cheap. But all these, all these lights. Where have you, where have you been? You know, that all um, represents things that you can trigger. You know, in my case, I have a bunch of movie samples and. Scan on, scan on, on. Can you turn that into a drum pad as well? Yeah. Um, if you if you switch modes, it can be a drum pad. You can actually play notes with it. So if you go over to user, you know all of these become a note or a drum pad. So they get Ableton, they get something like that, a mic, and they're they're ready to make some music, right? Yeah, it, um, this would these come with Ableton Lite. Oh, uh, perfect. Ableton Lite limits the number of things that you can add. Um, the number of inputs and the number of uh, audio and MIDI tracks, but it's a really good place to start. You've got like decades of knowledge with all of this. What kind of knowledge do you need to set something up that's similar? if you're just starting out, like, is there some place to go that you can kind of get help like forums or you just kind of got to start plugging shit in and figuring out for yourself? So Ableton forums has a whole lot of good information. Image line for Fruity Loops forums has a whole lot of good information. The EDM, Ableton and FL Studio um, subreddits, if you're into Reddit, uh, if you can stay away from the political shit, Reddit is a great place for creative people to get together and you can get into those groups. Uh, in my case, I'm in the Ableton group. I am in the FL Studio group. I'm in the industrial and EDM groups because everybody there loves to share their accomplishments. And it's a, it's it's just 
great for creative. The same thing for the Native Instrument Old School Forums. They have the old forums there. Perfect. Um, uh, Image Lion Forums, they both have support forums and you know peer to peer forum there where you can go in and just get all the advice you can you can possibly want. I know you helped me out with uh, Ableton and this Novation keyboard. I'm showing everybody here. It even has the drum pad. It's the the Launch Key 49. And that one is a, uh, I love this thing. This thing is great. It does pretty much everything I, I need. So um, do you want to take us through some of your equipment on a tour? All right, this is a studio with the lights here. We got a couple of Shave Gig Bar Pros or Gig Bar 2 Pros. So there's both Shave Gig Bar 2s. And in the middle, we got the uh, Shave Scorpion. Dual RGB laser. <laughs> Move over here to the wall of base, and yes, my studio is an old bedroom. It is now a studio. And that are, is my wall of family. My All my babies up there on the wall. Curated by my baby who is in the office and does not want to be on camera. Over here in the corner we have Yalisa's sample pad that has been converted into a full electronic drum set so you can actually play real drums. Well, real <laughs> drums. And then right here is my NS Design electric upright 5 string and I love that motherfucker. Over here in the corner, this is a uh, Complete Control S88 MK2 from Native Instruments. Sitting on that's my light controller that is run off of that laptop. Then I run my voice through the uh, Mini Nova synthesizer because I like to do vocoding. Nobody wants to actually hear me, at least I don't. So I use that to uh, modulate and throw effects on my voice. And it can be used for rhythm and bass, too, if you really want to. Old gaming laptop turned into a Ableton controller. Or Ableton machine. And then you've got the Novation uh, launch pad and launch control, which is used for triggering everything you see right there in Ableton that's on a grid. Old school Korg Chaosolator Pro and Chaos Pad. Could do live sampling, manipulate audio, manipulate MIDI. Just all around badass. And then the, the software interface for my hardware analog synthesizer. This is the Behringer DeepMind 12. This thing is kind of cool. I'm not being paid by Behringer to say that. It's just fucking cool. On the next level, you have the Behringer TD3. This is an analog-based synthesizer. That's the silver guy back there. Next is an Akai LPD-8 drum pad. I have it set up for trigger and hold. It can be set up for other things. I have these controlling various parameters in MIDI in Ableton because you can configure that. Next up is my um, Roly MPE controller. These are Roly blocks, not the uh, more expensive Roly Grand. I'd love the Roly Grand. You hear that, Roly? I could love to be sponsored. Ha! Send me money. I mean, anyway. And then hiding back here is a MIDI mix. Pro, which, oh no, this isn't the Pro, this is just the MIDI Mix, it's a little smaller. I just like saying the word Pro, it sounds cool. Um, this is literally a mixer interface that controls this, the same things that you see selected up here in Ableton, surrounded in blue. So as I move that bar over, these first eight sliders and sends and returns and panning control and mute control and all that other fun stuff. That all moves with this blue bar. So if I 
as I move over, so does the, uh, the interface. Anyone using Ableton knows that, but some people don't use Ableton all the time, so they wouldn't know that. Down here is the uh, Tascam interface that handles um, my routing and my audio for, uh, for internal. This is my Behringer XR18 mixer that handles my outbound audio and goes over here to OBS in that computer. And then down below we have the Line 6 M13s which are multi-effects pedals. Basically if it's a stomp box it's in there. And then more foot controllers here on the ground including sustain for the keyboard and multi-function potentiometer controllers which you know is that guy, those guys. Don't mind the toes. And then back over to the wall of bass because who else, who doesn't need an 8-string guitar next to their basses, you know? I have a standard Ibanez as well, so, you know, for you, for you uh, guitar purists, you'll like that. And you got a picture of my lovely wife in the corner. A sugar poster, because everyone should get a little sugar in their life. Well, James, I love all the equipment and all that stuff, but the big question is, what kind of sounds come out of it?
It is amazing stuff. And I know we've been longtime friends and I always appreciate your music and appreciate what you do for me and the community of musicians out there. This is Trolls Tech, everybody. I love you people. Love you, brother.